So let's start off with a prayer. Uh, Father, thank you for the time that we have uh, to come before you, God. Uh, Lord, this morning I pray that you could bind our hearts to yours so that we really can stay in step with your spirit, Father, uh, to know that you are truly with us. Uh, you desire that relationship with us more than anything else, God. I pray that those of us that are uh, heartbroken and grieving, uh, that you would heal us, heal our hearts, Father, and, uh, and truly make us, giving us the capacity to love more. And Father, we appreciate you, we love you, Lord, and it's in your Son's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so uh, unfortunately, a quick recap is we started off with grief, right? Yep. We understand what grief is at this point. Uh, it's basically heartbreak over unfinished relationships and communication that we didn't have uh, with the person that we really wanted it to be with. Um, some of the tools that we talked about were loss history graph, relationship graph, and now that final thing about completion, about trying to complete this relationship is what I call a, uh, they call it a grief letter in the grief recovery class that I do. Um, today it's called my final letter to my father, okay? Uh, from my lost history graph, he passed away 2018. Um, kind of laid all those things out for you and then I picked that relationship to do all this type of work with it, to really begin to examine uh, my heartbreak towards him, the relationship that wasn't completed with um, and that's the goal is to get to this completeness. Uh, I'm sorry you can't see this, but when we do that relationship graph, you have like sweet feelings on one side, sour feelings on the other. Uh, some of those were I was adopted in August, I was born in June. So it's like, hey, somebody didn't want me. Hey, somebody really wanted me. You know, it's those type of things. Um, he's always a safe spot for me, but it was really hard for him to share his heart with. Uh, he taught me a whole bunch of work skills that I'll never forget, but he was angry all the time about stuff. So basically this completion letter is just kind of putting all that sour stuff to the side and being able to remember the good things about him, you know. And what this class about is about today is really forgiveness. And forgiveness is what you do with somebody else. And forgiveness is really between you and God. Okay? We'll get into that, but I'm going to share this letter with you first. It says, uh, and this is like the culmination of all of it. It says, Dear Dad, I've been reviewing our relationship and have discovered some things that I want to tell you. Uh, Dad, when I walked out on you to pursue my own life, I felt scared, but I needed to do it. I also felt like I abandoned you as a son. Um, I stopped being your son, stopped sharing my life with you, and I'm sorry for leaving you and all the things that I never said to you. That's part of that apology. Dad, when you worked all the time and were not home to deal with mom's emotions, I felt lonely, unprotected, abandoned, and vulnerable. I hate that you were not there for me uh, to deal with her. You left me all alone to do it, and you never talked to me about it. I forgive you for not being there for me. I still pick up the phone to call you because I miss you so much, and I want you to be there for me. I'm so sad about the things uh, that we did not say in the life we did not have together. I love you. I miss you. Goodbye, Dad. That's the hardest part that I've ever had to do. Excuse me for a second. When I originally did this, I probably cried for about three days straight. Uh, these things that I've shared with you are nothing but tools, okay? The thing that really helped me get through this is my relationship with God. And it's being able to forgive my dad for the things, like, I'm sorry that this letter won't make sense to you in a lot of ways, but it means everything to me. Um, it allowed me to just stop being mad at him. It allowed, it, it just opened up a whole bunch of capacity in my heart to love other people. 
uh, a lot of the anger that I had that was coming out sideways and a lot of the relationships that I had was, it was just gone. And I know I shared this at the first class. Uh, I, I still have the sorrow and the sadness. It's there, you know, which is pretty evident, but it's for the relationship that I desired to have with them that I never got. But I also remember the things that we did that were fantastic. So that's pretty much the completion. Uh, the class that I do for grief recovery, it's like seven, eight sessions. And it's a lot of digging down to get to this point in your life where you can let this go. Now, this is the real meat of it. This is the forgiveness piece, right? So uh, take your Bibles out. Please turn to Matthew chapter 18. Okay? I'm not going to read this entire scripture. But we're going to start Matthew chapter 18 and verse 21. This is a piece about forgiveness. And so, basically, when you're going through this grief, you have relationships that are tangible, and you have things that are very intangible. This process works for both of these things right here, right? So, this is a parable of the unmerciful servant. But it starts out in verse 21. Uh, then Peter came to Jesus, and he asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times, right? This is a forgiveness piece of it. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. And then you have the entire parable of the unmerciful servant, where basically this guy owes the master. The servant owes the master a ton of money. The master says, hey, I forgive all your debt. The servant goes out, and he starts just grabbing people that owe him money, and he's treating them poorly right master gets wind of it and he says we'll pick it up in verse 32 then the master called the servant in he said you wicked servant he said i canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as i had on you in anger his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed this is the important sentence 35 this is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. All right? Forgiveness, like I said before, is between you and God. But forgiveness is not condoning what somebody does to you. It's not forgetting what somebody did to you. It's basically you no longer holding it against them. All right? That's the peace that's between you and God right there. Because there's stuff that has happened to these people that have happened to you in this room that is unimaginable. I understand that. I don't fully get what you went through, but it's hard. It's challenging. And the thing is, a lot of times what we desire to do is hang on to. We want people to recognize how badly they've hurt us, right? You want them to see it before you can actually forgive them. That's just not the case biblically. It's not letting them off the hook, but it's not the case biblically. Uh, First Peter chapter 2 says, when they heard their insults at him, this is Jesus, he did not retaliate. He suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Right? Jesus gave himself over to God. And that's where this entire thing lies, really with God. Okay? Now, here's the really, really, really hard part about this. You need to begin, when I say you, I mean all of us in this room. We need to begin to take responsibility for our response to the losses in our life. Because stuff happens to us all the time. Okay? People are going to sin against you all the time. These things happen. Alright? So what does that mean for you? Okay? It means that nobody can make you feel a certain way. The way you feel is by your choice. It's hard to accept that. But the thing you can do 
just take responsibility for it, and then you can take steps to pretty much let this stuff go. And as we were talking about all those different things, you know, like your lost history graph, your relationship graph, your closing letter, that allows you to let that stuff go. Um, one thing I do want to remind you of is you're not responsible for what someone does to you. That's an action. It happens. They did it to you, right? Okay. But how you feel is your choice. And nobody makes you feel a certain way. I really want you guys to understand that and remember it. And just kind of hold on to that. Because if you go back to this first Peter scripture, it's like everybody's hurling insults at the Son of God. He's like, hey, I entrust myself to the Lord. That's how these, it's just unfortunate, but that's how these things go. You know, and as you looked at, the lost history of my life from a couple classes ago. It's like a house gets hit by a tornado. My whole family's dead except for the people that I know. You know, myself, my wife, my kids. Everybody else on my dad's side of the family is gone and I have one aunt left and that's it. Um, so turn over to Luke 23, verse 33. My grief stems from that, but it's very, very, very common. Luke 23. Okay. Can everybody hear me in the back? Yes. Luke 23, verse 33, it says, When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his left, one on his right. Uh, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Okay? Everybody here knows the crucifixion of Jesus, right? Just the horribleness of it. What's the thing that really sticks out to you here? It says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Most people, when they do stuff to us, they're clueless about it. When people get mad at you, they're yelling at you, whatever else happens in your life, they don't understand sometimes, they don't get the impact of how bad it hurts you. The words of Jesus, the Bible says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Forgive somebody regardless if they're ever going to acknowledge you. If they're ever going to acknowledge your pain, the suffering, whatever they did, however your life was. That's what Jesus did. That's the thing that got me through this particular class and the Psalms. Being able to open up and really express the emotions that I have. And uh, pour all that stuff out to God. You know, when Jesus was crucified... He's not there saying, uh, you know, you guys need to acknowledge your sin. You know, you need to account for your actions before God will forgive you. The people that do stuff to you, that's on them before God. People that really want to repent, you know, what longingness, what justice to see things made right. That's on people that do stuff to you. Forgiveness is us taking that one percent responsibility that we need to have for our feelings and basically letting that go okay super hard to do it so the last thing I have for you is um, this also happens with people that are still alive right um, I don't even know how to describe this I'll just it's basically any hopes dreams or expectations that you had associated with the person that were never fulfilled is something that you can kind of let go of. Uh, there was this one brother, I, I liked him a lot, he's not in this church, um, and I really wanted to be great friends with him, right? And I was like, man, I can't wait to just, we're gonna be friends, you know, share stuff together, have a great time. Uh, he wasn't about that, you know, for a long time, I was like disappointed, felt sad, all of this stuff. But the truth is, it's like, he never sinned against me in any way, shape, or form. It's my expectation was up here, my reality was here. 
okay? And so I just had to let go of my expectation of that relationship of being a good friend of this guy or him being a good friend of me. And a lot of times we get stuck in that also, where it's like, yeah, and you're ignoring me. You're sinning against me. You don't give me the time of day. I'm like, that's not on that person. You know, that's just something I wanted. And that's something that you got to let go of too. You know, that's just a very simple explanation to, uh, that's not even really forgiveness. That's just me repenting of my own sin. You know, so. Um, even this brief recovery stuff kind of helps those things out where it's like, I had these hopes, dreams, and expectations that were associated with having a great friendship with that guy that I just had to put aside. You know, it's like, ah, okay, it's over. But the real grief that I have, you know, with my dad and not being able to live that life that I wanted to live with him, I never get that opportunity, you know. And so that I had to set aside, give it over to God and put it away and really let the Holy Spirit uh, heal my heart. Let God heal my heart. Okay? Um, I'm going to cut the class off right there for specifics.